What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another edition of Living Blessed, the podcast. I'm your host, Joe Von J. Palmer. And as always, we got dope, special people on the podcast sharing special and vulnerable moments. I have no other than Miss Lashana West, Madam Accountability on Demand. How are you feeling today? I am doing great. Thanks for having me. Thank you for coming today. Thank you for having you. Thank, for, thank you for just being here. <laughs> no problem. Thank you for being a mental health spe specialist. Woo, Jesus. Thank you for just being you and what you do in your space. So let's get into it. Introduce yourself. Tell the people who you are. Sure. So my name is Lashana West. I am a business therapist, and you can catch me on all things social at Miss West Creative Coach. And I help entrepreneurs move the mental blocks that are stopping them from scaling. Many times they think it's perfect graphics, their funnels, their landing pages, and I disagree. It's literally your mindset. So I hope you do the inner work so you can scale in life and in business. Dope. So I've always wanted to ask this question. Yeah. I've never heard anybody say that they're a business therapist. Mm -hmm. How did you come about becoming a business therapist? Yeah, so great question. Honestly, when I first got into entrepreneurship, I was trying to do what everybody else was doing. Oh, I'm a mindset coach. But I've literally been in the mental health field for 20 plus years. I'm talking about residential, foster care. I was a program director of a crisis stabilization unit. I've done all the things in mental health and mindset is a piece of it, but um, it's way more intense and comprehensive. So I said, I need to stop calling myself a mindset coach because that's what Keisha and Maxwell and Jacob calls themselves <laughs> and boo boo. <laughs> I'm going to actually call myself exactly what I do. Mm -hmm. I'm a business therapist. And you're probably like, okay, well, what's that? Yeah, yeah, I, 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 need, I need to know. <laughs> I need to know. Because when you yeah. said that, I was like, yo, that's dope. Yeah. Because you never heard, no, I've never heard anybody say, because in my head I'm thinking, you're like, these entrepreneurs need some therapy. Right. I say it all the time, like, yo, you need therapy, you need therapy, you need a therapist. Like, mm -hmm. go in depth, please. Yeah, well, first of all, we all need therapy. We all need a therapist. So... It's using a strategic therapeutic approach mm -hmm. in the coaching relationship, in the coaching and business strategy. So, okay. no, I'm not providing formal therapy. I could if I wanted to, but I don't do formal therapy. I do business therapy. So if Keisha's coming, and I don't know why I always say Keisha. <laughs> I probably got like a, <laughs> basically, if Keisha coming to me, right, and she's like, I have all these thoughts. I know I could be A, B, and C, but I just can't show up live and I can't ask for the sale. Where does that come from? What's the function of that behavior? That's the clinical stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Getting to the root cause of her lacking confidence, maybe struggling with imposter syndrome and being in her head mm -hmm. has nothing to do with the business. So we get to the root cause of that, unpack that, give her a strategy. She's working through that while she's building her business. It, it lessens her shrinking. It minimizes her struggle with imposter syndrome and she could literally be her full authentic self, still do the work, but still build her business with ease and ultimately scale. Dang. Yeah. Now, mind you, I didn't just wake up and come with this. Uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> you met me when I first started. Yeah. Yeah. Like literally y'all, I am 10 months clean from my uh, nine to five. You know what I'm saying? We, I think I'm tapping on the right thing. I'm 10 months clean. And what I mean by that, thank you. And actually we kind of We like right left. neck and neck. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and when I first started entrepreneurship, I'm a clarity coach. Let me help you build your business. Let me build your funnels all over the place. But mm -hmm. I knew that I had a skill set. But what people were coming to me for, they literally were attracted because of my communication, my approach, my empathetic, my empathy, right? So you have to give people what they need, but really serve them what they what they actually need. Mm. So when I looked at my data, because I do an um, initial call with everybody before they work with me, and I'm looking at my data, what's your number one issue? Confidence, struggle with imposter syndrome, not believed in myself. It had nothing to do with increasing my leads, uh, working on my messaging, nothing, right? So finally, after two and a half years, I'm literally standing full in my power mm -hmm. and being my authentic self and calling a thing a thing <clears throat> and talking about it's your trauma. That's mm -hmm. the reason why you can't scale. The reason why you got that course sitting on ice that you haven't launched yet is because the inner work that needs to be done. You were bullied in the past and every time you show up on live, you're in your head wondering if people are talking about you. Right? Dang. Oh, we... Listen. I know we get this so, deep this early. God. Oh, we getting deep. <laughs> okay. 
So, and I'm super excited. You mm-hmm. should be excited about what you do. Oh, I love what I do. Right? I love I, it. I, I love that. When I show up, I get excited. Um, of course, like you get a little jitters that come for like a little bit, but it's just yes. when I'm in it, I love it. Mm-hmm. I, sometimes I hate to stop. Exactly. Exactly. And that's, that's a whole nother thing, though, because sometimes... We overwork Mm -hmm. and we burn out because we love it. But literally, that's not a clear boundary. You can love it and still be able to breathe and not be burned out when you're done. So that's a whole nother thing. Mm -hmm. (laughs) That's dope. So let's go back into your journey of childhood. I love to Mm -hmm. just kind of see how people's childhoods were and what led them to become who they are today. Yeah. Um, So let's talk about young Lashana. Who was she? Wow, I don't know. Y'all better go. Uh, wait, let me let me feel my pulse real quick. Hold up. Okay, right now it's at a moderate pace. Okay. All okay. right. So this is the cool thing about entrepreneurship. Uh-huh. Entrepreneurship enabled me to tell my resiliency story, mm-hmm. not my trauma story, not what happened to me. My resiliency story, and believe it or not, the very thing that I get paid very well to do, I struggle with it in the past. So I grew up in a military home. Um, now it makes sense. What? You're so stern. You're so like, <laughs> oh, okay. Accountability for the man. Okay. That's but, but okay. That, it's that's, all making sense it, now. So now we're getting to the function yeah, okay. of the person. All right. All right. But that's not even wait till you. You might as well brace yourself. <laughs> so b- both of my parents were addicted to crack cocaine, right? Uh-huh. Functioning drug addicts. My dad in the military. Slow down. Break down what a functioning drug addict is. Some people may not know exactly what yeah, that is. Yeah, thank you for stopping me. Mm-hmm. Um, so a functioning drug addict is someone who does drugs, crack, whatever, but they still go to work. Mm-hmm. They still are able to function everyday activities, but they're doing that. And of course, you can't have a full um, healthy life. So... There's breakdowns, there's inner stuff going on, but they still present. My dad was still going to work as a military man, yes, sir, when coming home and doing crack cocaine. And uh, they were, I say I I was able to see drugs, sex, and rock and roll, meaning domestic violence, uh, glasses being thrown against the wall, up late night cussing and arguing. I walked in one day and see my mom having sex with somebody else as a five-year-old, right? My dad, with lots of infidelity, um, physical abuse, emotional abuse, all that. I was able to either see or endure. When I was four years old, I was running from my mom because I lost a $100 bill. In the 1980s, a $100 bill was like- <laughs> Six figures almost. Six figures. <laughs> <laughs> And I'm running from her because I lost a $100 bill and I fell and cracked my jaw on the ground. Ooh. Mm-hmm. So imagine you're running from your mom because you can't find a $100 bill. You fall and crack your jaw on the ground. Blood's everywhere. And the first thing she tells me, when we go to this hospital, you bet not tell them people I was about to whoop you. So trauma. Now you got to think of a lie. All of that together. We get to the hospital and they just stitched my jaw up. They didn't do any x-rays. They didn't do any due diligence to see what happened. Was there a fracture? Was there anything broken? Yeah, even if you had a concussion. I agree. Fast forward, I grew up with a crooked jaw for about eight or nine years. And by the time I was 18, I had three reconstructive jawbone surgeries. Now, I'm giving you the fast forward thing, Mm -hmm. right? And I just started telling this story. I used to be very mute about it. Um, And so being bullied, called crooked mouth. I would talk really quickly because I didn't want people to notice. Some people could notice and some people couldn't. Mm -hmm. It's like if they had a keen eye, they'd be noticing, right? Uh But imagine me, like this would never happen because then I know that the camera's fixated on me. You're fixated on me. It would never happen. I dropped three speech classes in college because in speech class, you got to stand up and speak, yeah. right? And that's a prerequisite to get your degree. Mm-hmm. So how I was able to pass it, I took speech online and I only had to show up one time. It, that was the hack. But as I was growing up, very communicative, very smart, very brilliant, had to fend for myself, hustler mentality. I mean, there was times when I would steal food from the grocery store and cook it because my mom was out doing her thing. They got divorced when I was about nine and it was just me and my brother and my mom, and she would be out smoking crack for days, we'd have to fend for ourselves. I'd be stealing clothes at the stores. When I go to school, people would vote me best dressed, thinking that everything was 
P.G. King would literally go home to a dysfunctional home. And so I started to work in corporate America and I knew that I couldn't just not communicate. So I started to engage in exposure therapy. I just made that up. I would <laughs> I've never heard that term. <laughs> what is that? So I would volunteer to present. I would volunteer to stand up and do things because I knew I had to. Got so good at it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Exposure therapy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do so the you put yourself out there to pretty much get the repetitions in to be good at what you want yes. to be good at. Yes. And okay. No, mind you, oh, I had no that. therapy myself with all that traumatic stuff that went on. So I was just thugging it out. And mm. so when I got to corporate, I got so good at my skill set, they would tap me on the shoulder, promote me, fly me all over. I got promoted from being a youth care worker because I was my my bread and butter. What I love, 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 what I'm excellent at is working with youth, at risk youth. Mm -hmm. Like yep, that's my thing. Yep. Why? Because we were once there mm -hmm. and we know what we needed. Yep. And so we would provide that. So they went to promote me from mini supervisor to supervisor to program director mm -hmm. all over the world. And uh, fast forward. I got into the mental health field after working with youth. I seen that this can heal me and then I can heal others. Like I literally learn and heal vicariously through my work. I don't know if that makes sense. But yeah. in school, when we're learning all these things to be a therapist. That's, that's helping us heal. Absolutely. You're learning about CBT and family systems and all of that good jazz. And so fast forward, two master's degrees, climb the corporate ladder, um, Moved to Atlanta, Georgia four years ago. Wait, where are you from? Born in Germany, because I was in the military. Lived all over, but I claimed Kansas, Topeka, Kansas to be exact. So let me ask you this real quick. Yeah. Since you're from Germany, are you like considered a German? Um, a citizen born abroad. I, I had that special certificate. Like every time I enrolled in college, I had to show that. So no, I'm not considered a German because my dad was in the military. Gotcha. But I am a citizen born abroad. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah, I want to go back there just to kind of pull up on him and be like, what's up? <laughs> Guten Abend. Guten Nacht. Okay, I'll stop. No, um, what did you say? Oh, oh good know. morning, good night. That's all I know. Hi, <laughs> <Okay. laughs> yo. So fast forward. I'm talking about climbing a corporate ladder. I want to be an executive director. I want to be CEO. That's all I knew, right? Trying to make six figures, never made six figures. When I left corporate 10 months ago, I was at 70K. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was at a job for 10 years, and when I left there, I was at 67, okay? Mm -hmm. Hold on to those numbers, right? Moved to Atlanta, seen the entrepreneurial scene of entrepreneurs and creatives doing their thing doing what they love. Some of them probably even have no degree at all. They just had the courage and the skill set and the mindset to say, this is what I'm doing. And like Neil say, it has to work or it has to work. Okay. <laughs> and got plugged in with some awesome communities. Morning Meetup is one of them. That's how I met you. Fast forward. I was able to leave my nine to five, scale my business, pass the six figure mark in six months. Right. And here we are. I no longer work for corporate. I'm doing what I love, helping entrepreneurs. And I'm just so blessed that I get to do this work. Yeah, that's no, that's lit. Yeah. So let's go back a little bit because <laughs> you're not about to fast forward and keep fast forwarding and fast forwarding. I got questions. Look, that's the part of the deflection and the trauma, y'all. Yeah. We even when we get to the point where we're telling our story, we be we still be like boom, boom. Then when you got boom. somebody like Javon, they be like, well, pause. <laughs> what does that mean? So let's get into it. I need I need a cigar. I don't even smoke. Listen, that might be a little, little aesthetic we can put down. <laughs> so, growing up in a dysfunctional home mm -hmm. as a child, yeah, how did that affect you growing up outside of the things that you just mentioned? Like, physically seeing your mom get beat, yep. your parents do drugs, you having to fend for yourself, steal groceries, steal clothes. Yep. What is that doing to you as a child? Yeah, so honestly, now as a therapist, what was it doing to me as a child? Take I'll the therapist hat off real quick and just go to a human, I know it's hard. Man, I, know, I ain't I trying to do that. <laughs> I know it's super hard, but take the therapist hat off and go into the Lashana without before she said, you know what, I wanna become a therapist. Right. Go to that person, and what did it look like? Okay, so basically what it looked like, always on 10, always on um, having my guard up, mm -hmm. not trusting, fending for myself, and just no time to just really be a kid. Yeah always thinking about the next step, the next win, the next 
what am I going to do? You know what I'm saying? Um, there was a time when my mom was bringing random men in the house, you know, and lots of stuff mm -hmm. happening. Um, but I didn't get any kind of mental health support, right? So there was even a time where I struggled with, um, they call it trichomonotalia. And I don't even Heard know if I'm that. pronouncing it right. Hair pulling. Yep. And I've never even shared that. So you're welcome. No, I was playing. <laughs> I'm, I'm welcome because honestly, I get a lot of I'm first being times, facetious. Facade, first time but, stuff. But um, that is talk about that. anxiety imposed behavior. Like if you pull Trickle. your hair. Yeah. And I, I can't even really pronounce it. Like nobody really talks about it. It's in the DSM. OK. okay yeah. I Google got, it. We can Google it. Right now. But um, hair pulling. Yep. And if you if you boil that down, that's self inflicted, mm -hmm. and that was due to anxiety and depression. Um, didn't get any therapy for it. My family knew about it. Uh, girl, stop doing that. And now, as growing up as a woman, I'm understanding that was super, 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 super severe. Mm -hmm. Right? Um, T R I C H. Just put in hair pulling and put in yes, T-R-I-C-H. <laughs> my spelling. Go on, give them the definition. All right. So it's a disorder that involves <clears throat> recurrent irresistible urges to pull out body hair. Mm -hmm. Urges to involve pulling out hair from the scalp, eyebrows, or other areas of the body. Yep. Mm. Never share that publicly, but honestly, y'all, I am so confident and so secure in who I am. And I think this is going to help somebody to wear. Because see, this is the thing. Our story is not for us. For sure. It's for somebody else. Mm -hmm. And when we hold it, not only do we hold ourselves captive, we're, we're holding others captive too. Like, I feel so free. Never even share that. My daughter don't even know that. Really? My daughter's dad don't know that. We were together for years, right? Thank um, you for sharing that. And I just want to thank you because we need more safe spaces to share. Mm -hmm. That's where the real work comes in. So struggle with that. Um, what else? Yeah, just I mean, when you don't have any support, you're on your on your own devices. So anything you're vulnerable to everything. Mm -hmm. So being vulnerable to everything, because I I can so relate. Mm -hmm. Just being, I was gullible. I was, you know, you name it, I was it pretty much. Yeah. You know, because you have so much that you're going through. You, you know how to process anything that you're going through. You know how to. You don't know where to take this stuff. Yeah. So where did you take all of your hurt, your pain, your trauma as a child? Mm -hmm. I took it to I'm going to do sports. I'm going to work a job, even though I'm 14 and lie on my application. I'm going to make money so I could be on my own. I'm going to make sure that my kids don't go through the same stuff. Mm -hmm. So I went on an upward path instead of a downward path, even though I was doing things like stealing, even though I was, um, of course, uh, smoking weed and drinking at a young age, I still knew my end goal. So I did it socially mm -hmm. just to, just to kind of, you know, tap in with the, the, I'm going to say the young folks because I was grown. Yeah. Anytime that you actually, I was so keen on my mom that I could be on the phone with her and I would know that she was high. And so now I see that that's intuition. That's being very, very tapped into energy. But, um, I, even though I was 14, I was like 18, 19 year old. Mm. So, I took that experience and said, I'm going to break the cycle no more. Were you the oldest? No, youngest and only girl. Youngest and only girl. So how many siblings did you have? Two brothers. So were they, in a sense, raising you or were you raising them? Um, so my older brother, he was like way, way older, so he wasn't in the home with us. Mm -hmm. But my other brother, I wouldn't say I was raising him, but I was definitely mentoring him and taking care of him. So you feel like you were parentified, in a sense? Well, well, kind of. And when I say kind of, in a sense of me still in cooking, making sure he's eating, but not so much as what you're doing, raise. don't do that. Because yeah. he's he's older and he's, and it's funny, he's an LMFT, bilingual black LMFT to be exact. What's the LMFT? Licensed mental health professional. Yeah, I break down um, stuff for people. <laughs> hey, but I don't know the right, stuff. Right, right. We both went into the mental health field. That's insane. Do you think trauma takes people into the mental health field? Most definitely. Why? because they want something different mm -hmm. and they don't know exactly how to get it. So they go and get the steps and the education and the experience and the expertise to, to get, get the information. But of course you want to help. I think, I think at the end of the day, we're the best to do it because we've walked in it. It's relatable and it's not just a degree that I got. And now let me help you. I, at least for me, right? Think about it. If you go to somebody who's never experienced trauma, who's never grown, grown up in a dysfunctional home, but they went and got the accolades and now they want to help you, 
yeah, they can help you, but do they really, really, really understand what you're going through? Now, mind you, you could say you disagree, whatever, but I think we are more apt and the probability is higher of our connection and impact. Because here's the deal. You could be the smartest cookie in the bunch, but if I don't relate to you and there's no relationship, it don't matter. Mm -hmm. So because of that, we're able to build quick um, relationships. And I think the experience is, is, is more effective. Gotcha. So <clears throat> now that you jumped into the mental health field, mm -hmm. what has been your biggest hurdle as a mental health specialist or mental health professional, should I say? Yeah. So when I was doing formal therapy, because I've been out of it for about five years, and I say formal therapy because it's different. Mm -hmm. You're tapping deep into the, the um, childhood trauma. You're going into the diagnosis. You are dealing with all the different variables. You know what I'm saying? It's not too much different, but it is. Um, so in that realm... I would say, and honestly, I loved it and I was really, really good at it. But the only thing I would say is I think that I should have made sure that I had a therapist while being mm, a therapist. Okay. Because I was, again, on, to my own devices and a lot of, you know, ego would get in the way with a supervisor. I had more professional uh, it, um, issues than relational or programmatic issues with the clients mm -hmm. like me not accepting feedback from my supervisor and that was on my pip my performance improvement plan or um having situations with peers that's more social yep i think that could have been addressed had i been in therapy to work through some of my own stuff okay does that make sense that makes a lot of sense do you think that since your childhood was the way that it was that's the development into your adulthood can you call that, what do you call that adulthood traumas in a sense? Which part? The, you know, combativeness, you know, not being responsive to superiors and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like those, those are some things that the childhood traumas that weren't addressed as a child trickled into your adulthood and then, we wouldn't say it's an adulthood trauma, but it's kind of like a, something related. Would you say Most that? Most definitely. Yeah, I would because my mom was not there to tell me what to do. Right. And if she was there and, and told me what to do, it was in a quick, abrasive not conducive way. Mm -hmm. So when I'm growing up and I'm going to work and I have a supervisor telling me what to do, in my opinion, you generalize the skills. So mm. my daughter growing up, I would teach her at home. So when she went to school, went to work, she already had those. I didn't really have that. So I think that caused some of the discord. But I will also say, because the place I worked at, it was big on behavior modification. Mm -hmm. And that ended up being on my PIP, my performance improvement plan, to where I started soliciting feedback, meaning asking for it. Hey, I worked on A, B, and C, any feedback for me, what do you think? That helped me to excel and, and do my own thing because I no longer, and, I mean, and I don't, I'm not trying to bring up the will stuff, but it was no longer a barrier or I wasn't in the victim role, I was in the victor role, right. I was in control. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, so <clears throat> now that you've gotten yourself in, in control, what was it something that triggered inside you to say, you have to fix this? Like, what was it that said, hey, Lashana, this isn't cute. Mm -hmm. This isn't the person I want you to be. Yeah. A repeated behavior that caused repeated feedback that would have ended up in a consequence. Mm -hmm. Me probably getting fired. Yeah. Right? And it's not even about the job. I can't continue to have this kind of feedback to where I'm going to get fired because I won't be able to maintain anything. So I had to change my behavior. Gotcha. And let me just say this, me not accepting feedback, I was super passionate about what I was doing. And I've always done things myself, so how is someone gonna come and tell me that I'm not doing this right? Mm -hmm. So like I said, I feel like it was ego, and it was also me not accepting decisions from authority. Got you. Okay, so what do you think, let's fast forward a little bit into this business therapist stuff. <laughs> <I'm>, <laughs> I got some more questions. Y'all, the business therapist got her own issues. Okay, baby boy. <laughs> so the business therapist. Yeah. You're the only person I know who has that tagline. There's a couple people trying to copy, but I'm not tripping in. And, and, and the reason why I say copy, y'all, let me just say this, because I got to do my own work. Uh -huh. I know that they're not me, and I know that I kind of created that and coined that. I mm -hmm. probably should get it trademarked or whatever. But, um... It doesn't matter when people try to take your your thing because they're not you. So this this I'm actually saying this for me, okay? I'm mm -hmm. not even saying this for y'all. So I'm still doing my work of they want to be a ther business therapist. Okay, that's cool. Good job on your impact. But I literally have taken that and 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 created it. 
So before we get into the business therapist, I had a thought. Yep. <clears throat> that I want to talk about. So you said that you're still doing your work. Uh-huh. So a lot of people think that therapists have it all together. Uh-huh. That we're just like, I don't want to say perfect individuals, but more so just individuals who don't really need therapists. What is the importance of a therapist needing a therapist, a coach needing a coach, yeah. a mentor needing a mentor? I think we need it the most because we're always pouring. And you can't pour from an empty cup. And even when you try, it's going to bubble up and pop. Mm-hmm. Right. So you have to catch things while it's small. And that's that self-awareness. We're both discertified, being aware of your gaps. If I'm a high I and a high D, but a lower S and a lower C. What are my gaps? So a coach needing a coach, a therapist needing a therapist or whatever, you know, that's going to support you. It is key to keep you on the up and up, keep the momentum going and be there when you need it because this is the deal let's say i don't have a therapist i don't have a coach i'm just to my own devices when i'm in crisis i don't even have anybody to tap into because there's nobody who's already walking with me Mm -hmm. so it's more in my opinion it could be preventative too to where you have one they're on standby you check in with them periodically it's not intensive but that keeps you supported and equipped got you yeah okay so back to the business therapist then stuff so as you become a business therapist, yeah. what said, you know what, because you said you were all over the place once upon a time. You were doing mm-hmm. the, you know, all types of stuff. Yeah. What's, what helped you niche down and say, this is what I want to do? Mm-hmm. This, is what, this is what the need is right now in the market. Yeah, honestly, really looking at the impact that I was truly, truly, truly making, mm-hmm. really looking at when Keisha, Jackie, and Maxwell came to me, what were they struggling with and how was I able to help them mm-hmm. and seeing it had nothing to do with the things that I initially was communicating in my mind. Of course, yes, I helped them get clarity, but it wasn't a, a promise of increasing their revenue. It was increasing their confidence, increasing their inner worth, having them do the deep work to see what was in the way and working through that. So once I looked at that, looked at my data to see why were people really even coming to me, it was a no brainer and mm-hmm. I didn't really change much. It was me really saying the true things of what I do and who I could truly help and how I could truly help. Got you. It's 80% the same. The only difference is doing the deep inner work instead of the fluff and surface work that we think is going to help us make more money and change our business. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. So <clears throat> explain the process of what a business, business therapist does. Mm-hmm. Because, of course, it's not something I can Google online and find much information about it. Right. Because, in a sense, you're pretty much like the person who's setting the tone, the pace for this whole space for business therapists. That should mm-hmm. be a thing where I'm seeing conferences. I'm oh, see- for sure. <laughs> I'm, I'm just having these visuals in my head. Yeah. I'm seeing some things happen in this space for other therapists who want to get into mm-hmm. this space who's like, you know what, I'm tired of the one-on-one clientele and things like that. Yep. I want to do something new. Yep. How can someone become a business therapist or just kind of shift their whole model to become this? Yeah. So the first step, I think you need to decide what your niche is. Mm -hmm. Every business therapist doesn't have to help you do the inner work. You could be a business therapist that specializes in imposter syndrome. You can be a business therapist that works with individuals who have experienced sexual trauma Mm -hmm. and they are helping them work through that so they don't carry that baggage into the coaching relationship. For sure. Um, It could be a business therapist who specializes in self-awareness. The the distinctive thing is you are a real therapist. Mm -hmm. You cannot call yourself a business therapist and you're not a real therapist, right? But a mindset coach can be anybody from any walks of life and I'm still a mindset coach. So it sets you in your own path and trajectory and like Eric Thomas says, decide your lane and dominate your lane. You're able to dominate that lane dependent on your area of expertise. So think about it. When you go to psychology today, you can literally filter your symptoms and what you need. So think about what route you want to specialize in as a business therapist. I have a whole framework and I'm gonna just give you a little, a little um, snaz of it. It starts with courage. So when I'm working with my clients, we move through and work through courage. Mm -hmm. It's not lacking clarity. It's not lacking confidence. It's getting the courage to even communicate what you're thinking. So if I have somebody, let's give you a quick case study, had a woman, super skilled, super brilliant, but was not confident in going live or even sharing her expertise. So if you can't go live, you can't share your expertise. You darn sure can't ask for the sale. You darn sure can't 
have an effective coaching program where you are the the person who is in I'm not gonna say power position but the person who's teaching if you're lacking confidence in here and literally what we what we learned was that her childhood not growing up in a home warm and fluff not getting those positive affirmations not having a voice made her feel the way she felt. And even though she scaled in corporate America, she still would be an overachiever. I have to do all the things. I have to stay super late to prove my spot. So we helped her to build some healthy boundaries, helped her to build courage of going live, connecting with her audience. And when I say go live, it doesn't always have to be you front facing, but the people want to see you. They want to hear you. They want to see your quirks. If you got a gap, show all that, show your gaps. You got a crooked jaw. What's up? Crooked smile. You feel me? And so and I think and one person told me, Lashana, every idea I give you, you pump me up and you make me believe it. So and that's the accountability on demand and the cheerleader and the support. I feel that everybody has a gift. A lot of us are not operating in our gift right now. That's OK. You're not going to just start that way. But you know exactly what it is. Mm-hmm. Right. I wasn't operating in my gift initially. But me starting and getting the courage to say that I was going to be a coach helped me to get to where I am now to operate in my gift. And I'm still not done. Like, y'all about to see me on the big screens. You feel me. (laughs) I'm excited. I'm excited. I'm so excited for you. So let's talk about now coaching versus therapy. Mm -hmm. Because we have a lot of people who which I'm seeing on social media nowadays because mental health is becoming super popular right now. It's like the next big wave, which I'm not mad at. I'm not mad uh, at all. It's a beautiful thing. Very beautiful thing. But how do people decipher between someone who's a mental health, what do they call them? Help me out. Mental health professional? Mental no, health I know that. No, people like... Advocate? So, advocate, yes. So how do you decide between the mental health advocate who's pushing mental health stuff online and then the mental health professional who knows the diagnoses, who knows the triggers, who knows the traumas, who yeah. knows the, how to do the and help people do the inner work. How do you help people decipher between the two and know, okay, I'm following this person, so and so said that this isn't this is something to do, and then the therapist mm-hmm. is like, that's all the way backwards. Right, and it, honestly, I'm huffing and puffing because that annoys me, and I really was annoyed when I first got into the realm because I was just immediately annoyed. Now I have empathy. Mm -hmm. because they want to do something and that's great, but they have to take the correct steps if they truly want to do the thing they want to do. If you want to be a therapist, you got to go to school for it because there's things underlying and things that we learn that we don't talk about, but we know it instinctively and that's how we're able to operate how we operate. So an advocate versus a actual therapist, they're literally just an influencer to be brutally honest with you. Dang. They are a influencer sharing about a topic that they like. Mm. No disrespect, and I've never said no, that. No, 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 that's real. But as I think about it, they're an influencer. They're mental health influencers. Correct. Mm. They found a, something that they like, they believe in, they enjoy, and they are an influencer, and they're an advocate for that arena. A mental health professional, a therapist, can actually take you through a journey to do your healing, let you know why it occurred, how you can overcome it and how you can move forward so you don't relapse into that old behavior. And that's just like a quick, a quick thing. Mm -hmm. In addition, they have the diagnosis capability to tell you, okay, Lashana, you're struggling with fatigue, low energy, um, sleeping in and being moody. This might be depression. This might be anxiety because anxiety and depression, they, they, they go hand in hand. But an influencer, an advocate don't know that. So instead, they may say, self-care, go drink your water, sis. Tell that mm-mm, no when that's not going to fix the problem. Mm-hmm. And actually, I'm not even going to say fix because nothing fixes the problem. For sure. It's not going to address the problem. Yeah, yeah, so if yeah. you want to get to the root cause and address the problem and do your true work, go to a paid professional who's a therapist who went to school who has the insurance because there's certain things that we are bound to do and to not do right for example um being mandated reporters Mm -hmm. if i'm talking to somebody and they're like oh i want to kill myself i gotta report that now of course there's some probing questions to see we used to call it green bean statements (laughs) oh i'll die if i eat eat this green bean that's a green bean statement Mm -hmm. right so Anyways, back to the, you know what I'm saying? Nah, so, yeah, yeah um, they're influencers. I've never even thought to put two and two together like that. Mm-hmm. They, they don't know that. Yeah, for sure. They don't know that. But you cannot 
take a shortcut to the ultimate goal. Just because you are pro mental health and, you know, you got your little tree up there and you drinking your water and you're not a therapist. So stop trying to tell people how to address their mental health issues. Like that is a whole podcast and conversation all in itself because you can cause harm. We got some time. <laughs> we, I got time to date. <laughs> we got some time. We got, look, you said that. Look, I said, we got some time. <laughs> I mean, it, it makes no, me no, upset, go into though. It. No, seriously, because I'm scared for a lot of people who are jumping into the mental health wave. Right. Not the, Well, I'm scared for the individuals who are posing themselves as these individuals. Yes. I'm also scared for the individual who is following the individual who's saying these things you need to do, boom, boom, boom. And there's no PSAs, there's no cause of actions to say, go get a therapist, stuff like that. Exactly. And do you think mental health influencers, I'm, we're, 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 we're keeping this one. We're keeping we might need to do a t-shirt on that, for real. <laughs> You're not a therapist, you are a mental, mental health, health influencer. influencer. Go and do your real. Yeah. Do you think <laughs> it's hurting the field? Is it hurting the field or is it hurting the people? I don't think the field will ever get hurt, but the people will be impacted and it'll have them to have a, a, a tainted perspective. Well, yep, let me rewind. That is hurting the field. So, yeah, I think it's hurting the field and the people. Um, there was something else that I was going to say. Oh, life coaches is another thing. You're not a therapist. Let's, I got a question. <laughs> so are you a life coach? I'm not a certified life coach. No, a therapist trumps that. We, I don't need to be certified in life coaching. I'm a life coach because I went to school. I have eight years of master's work and took my exam. And that's almost like saying, did you graduate fifth grade and you a senior? You know, and y'all can come for me all y'all want to because I don't really got no trolls. So pull up on me. You know what I'm saying? But... No shade to life coaches. It's cool, but you're not a therapist, so please stay in your lane. So what do you say to the person who's the life coach and the therapist at the same time? That's great. They got some added in expertise and added in training. But that's me. I don't think it's necessary. <laughs> I know. No, that's good. No, but, okay, I let got, me ask you this. Yeah, please. Why you got me on the hot seat, okay? <laughs> this ain't your podcast. We're I know, at, but nah, I don't want me on here looking like I'm throwing <laughs> no, 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 shade no, no, and I'm in a negative. You're not. Cause I got, I got, do you, I know what you're ask me. was there any similarities into the life coaching and do you feel like you needed it now that you are getting deeper into the mental health expertise? So you want to know why the reason why I got my certificate, right? I got it because I couldn't get in school to become a therapist at the time because I had owed some debt to my previous undergraduate school. Got it. So I said, Oh, this is the way, another way for me to like utilize the intuition and wisdom that I have for now, for now, got you, got that paid off and went, just got enrolled in school because hold up. How much was the life coaching certificate? I pay like a couple hundred dollars for it. It wasn't nothing crazy. I just graduated school, broke, wasn't making no money. So if I invested it at that time, it couldn't have been a lot of what money. What was the training like? How long? So surprisingly, I got some really good training though. Okay. So the guy who actually certified me, he was an actual licensed therapist. He's a doctor. Got he it. He had his doctor in like psychology or something like that. That's what's up. Um, and he was licensed therapist and stuff like that. And then he had another guy who did like some other like mental techniques and stuff like that. So okay. I got some, a real thorough one. Got it. Versus the ones, I'm not gonna throw their names up there. Um, that I'm seeing today, mm -hmm. but it still wasn't enough for me. Wasn't enough because you aspire to be a therapist. Correct. Now, when you got that, what'd you do with it? Did you support or serve anybody? Kind of. It wasn't to the extent that I was comfortable in serving people though, because- The training was limited. It was, yes, it was limited training and there was still stuff that I needed. So- For sure, <clears throat> for sure. Now that you've been deeper into being a therapist, mm -hmm. Did you need it? I, I need to say that oh, on no, the microphone. No, I forget, yeah, okay, so you didn't need it. Nope. But it was helpful because some knowledge is power and it was for something, sure. it was right? Something, it was something for the time. It served its purpose. I would say that. It definitely okay. served its purpose for the time being. Got it. And what's the difference between life coaching and therapy? And then I'll, I'll stop being the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> the difference is the certification. One, it's just you have an in-depth knowledge of what the person is going on, going through internally. I think life coaches can fix the external. Mm -hmm. Therapists fix the internal. And the internal needs to become first. Gotcha. In my opinion, from what I've been learning in school and what I'm still learning in school is that right. it starts with the internal work first. Because if you don't fix the internal and we don't get to the core of the trauma, mm -hmm. the core of the behavior, or why you're outlashing, or why you 
are the person that you are today. Yeah. Then it's like we can't we can't date back. Life coaches only know how to do the external work. Mm -hmm. I see that you are overweight. I see that you know you got this scar on your face and you don't like it. I'm just gonna help you build the confidence to do it. But it's okay. Why did for my weight gain? My weight gain came from my trauma. Mm -hmm. I don't think a life coach can really help me with that. Right. A trainer, personal physical trainer, of course, can mm -hmm. because if they know. Oh, you just want to lose weight. But if I just lose the weight and I'm still dealing with the trauma, what's going to happen? Right. So the petty me wants to say life coaching is a Band-Aid. Therapy is surgery. <laughs> the but the professional me will say life coaching is a temporary fix. Mm -hmm. But if you want to get a deeper, thorough fix mm -hmm. to address it, then you want to take the therapy route. Absolutely. I think yeah. eventually... A life coach will get exhausted with the work that they have to do with somebody who hasn't done the internal work. Mm -hmm, for sure. They'll keep relapsing mm -hmm. because you're not getting to the root cause. You can't just keep cutting the leaves off. They're going to grow keep back because back. you haven't got to the root. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. This is good mental health talk. <laughs> we unintentionally had it because I was going to go to it, but we got to it. Oh. So appreciate that for sure. For sure. <clears throat> so now that you have this business right here this box <laughs> try test tweak accountability on demand uh -huh. let's talk about this right here Man, because i you believe got this. everybody needs a little bit of accountability this is for me right yes okay can i open it sure okay <laughs> so everyone needs a little bit of accountability this box is dope by the way oh, thank you snap oh i got a card <laughs> okay so y'all need to look at this first before i tear into it so when goes my camera, this is the box. Welcome to the AOD crew. Ooh, Don't worry about that. Got we ain't you. doing no squats right now. Uh, <laughs> all right. So you're talking about getting a good night's sleep. Affirmation card. Affirma oh, okay. Oh, this is dope. You yeah. made all this stuff? I didn't make them, but they come with my products. Got you. Okay. Yeah. I am accountable. Yep. And what do you see? So you see I'm accountable. What else do you see? Some colors. Uh-huh. But the underlying word. A O oh, able. Yeah, I am accountable. I am able. Mm. So I'm not three X no more. I'm <laughs> counting XL now. So we're gonna, hey! we're gonna swap that guy out. It, it run kind of small. I am so proud of you. Thank you. Thank you. I, and yes. you want to know why I'm down? Truth be told, it's not because I've been working out. It's because my therapist has been really been kicking my ass lately. Really? Yeah. About? Just to, <clears throat> so we've been working on my avoidance. Okay. And why do I avoid things and everything like that? Faith can move mountains. This yeah, is a dope. It's a journal. No, but it's a dope box, though. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. it's. I honestly, uh, I provide what I needed or what I need to feel supported and to feel um, mm -hmm. seen, valued, and heard. Mm -hmm. Right. Everybody wants to get a random gift of appreciation everybody wants to just have some goodies and mm -hmm. so all my clients get an accountability on demand box there's different things it's very curated to the person um so i just want to share about that and i didn't forget what you just said so tell me about the avoidance because yeah so how that make you lose weight because i would have so pretty much just like i like what i do i love food mm -hmm. but i didn't like food in a healthy way got it and uh you know so it's just she always she's like, you know, why do you avoid stuff all the time? Because I don't want to, I don't like confrontation. Mm -hmm. So I've been learning I don't like confrontation. But the crazy thing is I'm starting to love confrontation. Oh, really? You haven't taken on stuff that like, you know how you're talking about, you know, you, you took on roles to like make you better. Yep. That's what I've been doing. Like this whole year has been taking on roles. Hi, freaking five. To make me better. So the role to make me better is my weight loss. I've been challenging myself to be in the gym three days a week. 6 a.m. I hate early morning stuff. Mm -hmm. But I get up three days a week, sometimes four days a week. Um, you ain't been with us on a Saturday yet. No, I need to. I actually need to know who your therapist is because I'm struggling with the same exact thing. So we'll talk. I, I got you. She's, she's, she's my therapist about four years now. I just love that. I'm going to be honest with you. Let me say this real quick. Some therapists are doing just accountability and they're not doing the deep work with people. I've had to leave several therapists. And maybe really? it's because I'm a high-level therapist. I don't know. But I've also taken my daughter in the past and they just shooting the breeze. They're not giving her no coping skills. They're not having her do no homework, no deep work. I get homework. And so, like, I need somebody who's actually going to hold me accountable, teach me some new stuff, and equip me. And if oh. you do not have a therapist who's doing that, you really need to communicate with them. I'm not going to say you need to leave, but you need to communicate to them what you really need. Now, my therapist, when I don't show up, 
Yeah. Not skip a session. Mm-hmm. I get a phone call. That's what I'm talking about. I get a phone call. Like, Yo, I'm not gonna say what she typically say to me because like we just been together so long, so our relationship yeah. is a little different for most people. But she's she like, Yo, where you been? And I'm like, um, I had this going on. This and the third. Okay, why you ain't getting your therapy though? Hmm. Like she holds me super accountable. That's a non-negotiable. Oh, for sure, it's a non-negotiable, and that's what I had to realize last year leading into this year is that me not going to therapy. It, it, that mm-mm. Mm-hmm. So Friday noon is my therapy time. People know at noon, actually around eleven forty five, eleven thirty, you can't reach me. My phone automatically is on do not disturb. Nice. And then typically I take the rest of the day off Friday to reflect because I'm in therapy taking notes. Mm. Like I don't just go to therapy and just listen. I because I know right. sometimes I forget stuff mm-hmm. and she'll say something. Like, oh, that's dope. I like that. I like that. And I'm not taking it because I want to use it on somebody. I want to take it so I can reflect for back yourself. on it for yeah. myself. I have a whole notebook for just therapy. I love that. And then she teaches me. And you need to decompress from. Oh, all the work that I do now. Right? Yeah. Because <laughs> I've been there talking about everybody now. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder what this week going to look like. Right. Oh, I don't know. This week going to be a little heavy because I just having so much going on. But it's just the importance of just having a therapist as a therapist is so important because you're taking on so much stuff and so many other people's stuff, so many people's emotions, so many people's triggers, traumas, yes. you know, their attitudes, their emotions. You're taking all this in and you need to regurgitate it out. Mm-hmm. And that's what I do. So like at the next, first, when we first go to therapy, we do meditation. Okay. We do a guided meditation with Deepak and we just sit and rest and then sometimes I find myself falling asleep because it'd be so like... It's it just, in person? Mm-hmm. Yeah, we in person. Um, if we can't do a person, like if she gets sick, we'll do a phone call or I just can't make it some traveling, something like that. We'll do a phone call for yeah. about 30 to 45 minutes real quick. Just kind of get something in. Mm-hmm. But it's, um, guided meditation. What was your week like? What do you want to work on this week? So she lets me guide the, the sessions. And then she also knows, okay, Javon avoiding something. Mm-hmm. And then she'll be like, cause one time she called me out and I've been avoiding for the longest. You struggle with your confidence, don't you? Mm. And I was like, oh, here we go with this. And I was like, yes, I do. And then this is why I've been doing what you talk about. You've been doing, putting yourself in roles yeah. that make you better. So last yeah. year, we, we discovered that I struggle with confidence. Mm-hmm. So this year, <clears throat> this is the, like late in this last year, going to this year, I've been putting myself in place. That's been my homework. Put yourself in positions that make you uncomfortable yep. until you get better. Very so good. speaking, going live, all that stuff, you know, doing webinars, mm-hmm. and all that type of stuff. All the stuff that you see me now is the work of what I've been doing in the latter years. I love this. Is this the therapist that you shared about was working with the youth and you said, hey, I want. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I, when I watched your <clears throat> master class, it was so dope. And also, I just want to tell you, I'm so proud of you for you. sharing your resiliency story. Yeah. Like, I know that has released oh, some things. You know, uh, or it's, it's releasing because it's still in it's, pursuit. Yeah, it's still there. It's their pursuit, but it's just I feel so much better, and um, I'm thankful yeah. for the mental health space. I'm thankful yep. for therapy because she was the one that encouraged me to start just sharing my story and embracing my story. And now it's like I, I was like back then I was very timid still. Yeah. And but it's like now you ask me like yeah, I was talking to Dave one time. He's like you just go around telling this. And I was like yeah. yeah. He's like man I couldn't do it. I was like, we ain't the same person, you know. But it's just. I just do what I do. Yeah. I love it. And I realize and I love it so much because of the release it gives other people, the mm-hmm. liberation it gives people and the liberation it gives me to just tell it. And people are like, wow. Yeah. Like when it's, I know it's very shocking when people hear my story, like what you, yeah. Actually, when you, you said her response was, okay, is that it? Mm-hmm. You think it's shocking, but there's some people who. Yes. It's honestly, I didn't really <laughs> flinch. I was like, wow, I'm proud of him for sharing his story. Because of what I've seen, heard, and felt, and whatnot, right? Mm-hmm. And I'm proud of you because when we keep it here, yeah, it festers and mm-hmm. it goes into the weight here. Yep. It goes into our heart. It goes into our head, and it just manifests. Yeah, right. So kudos to you. I'm so proud of you. Thank you. Um, I've shared about the hair pulling for the first time in my life on national YouTube TV. Um, I'm proud of myself. Like today was a super win. Yeah, definitely a win. Yeah, definitely a win for you. So. And before entrepreneurship, I didn't even tell about the the jaw stuff. There's people in my hometown, there's family members that don't know my story about what happened to my jaw. In my mind, oh, or are they going to think my mom was uh, the culprit or is she going to get arrested? Da, 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 da. And somebody said, oh, your mom was running after you? Yeah, you should have got your ass whooped. And I'm, in my mind, I'm like, that was abuse. It's perspective. It's perception. Some people are like, oh, she was about to get a whooping. Yeah, unfortunately, she fell. 
who, right? And so that, that just tells me it depends on the lens of the person. But we, I know that it, I call it abuse because I was about to get whooping, mm-hmm. a whooping. Some, somebody else may not. Bottom line, I love my mom. Me and her are tight. I did not hold that against her. I'm actually thankful about my journey and what happened for me because mm-hmm. I would not be doing what I'm doing to support right. other people. <clears throat> she's been clean for 10 years. Kudos yeah, she still got her quirks. She's a little crazy. You feel me? <laughs> but at the end of the day, who's not? Mm-hmm. And one thing that a therapist told me a long time ago, our parents, it's not that they didn't want to do certain things. They didn't know how. So exactly. think of a cupboard. hmm that is bare. The cupboard doesn't have a plethora of stuff. Then you got a cupboard that has all these things. Her cupboard was bare. She couldn't take something that was not in the cupboard, right? So we're holding people accountable for things. I'm not saying that she gets a pass, but if I drag that baggage, I'm not going to be my full self and be an amazing parent, an amazing provider, an amazing uh, daughter. I got to let that stuff go and do my work, mm-hmm. right? And so that's what I'm doing every single day. You're doing the work. <laughs> <laughs> you are definitely doing some the of work. it. I'm not doing all of it because I, I need like to have my doing? I need to be in a, a a weekly therapy session. And the last therapist I had, I told her I was going to meet with her every other week. And she said, OK, she didn't even say, well, Lashana, we just started. And, and this is part of me being a therapist and part of me being Lashana. I'm wanting her to tell me. We just started. I don't know how what the f- frequency should be yet. Let, mm-hmm. Let's discuss that. But she just said, okay, so that maybe this is the alpha woman, whatever. I'm like, she ain't the one. I think it is the alpha woman inside of you. Yeah. I, th- <laughs> I think it is. Like, just looking at you, knowing you, you're definitely a top dog. <laughs> when I first met you, I was so intimidated by y'all. So like, oh, what? I get intimidated by high knees. Man, Not listen. anymore because I know. Yeah. But, like, back in the day, high knees made me so nervous. Mm. And I'm like, Okay, how do I deal with this person? How do I work with this person? Yeah. But you are very stern. Your posture is very like, like you just, <laughs> like before I, you open your mouth, you just, your body language just speaks to who you are. Uh-huh. And I was like, why is this girl here? <laughs> I remember why that. Her? I'm avoiding her. <laughs> I, Javon, Javon, I picked up on that too. I know you did. I picked I, up on that. As a mental health professional, you probably did. I picked up on that. But you know what's crazy? I heard you say hi, D. Uh, what's the function of people being a high D? Ooh, let's talk about it. What's the function of that? They didn't just wake up and say, I'm a high D. Uh, it's control. It's wanting to be not in demand, but it's confidence, it's control. But where does that come from? They didn't just wake up. That has been created, right? Mm. And once you're aware, you can determine, has it been serving you? So you think you just answered your own question? What? As to why you are the way you are when it comes to therapists. Yeah. Yeah. But but I guess what I'm saying is our childhood and our upbringing and our trauma mm-hmm. is indicative of who, who we, we are, are on the dis. Yes. Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Because I'm a high, high, high S. My D is super low. Mm-hmm. You know my, you know my D is? Take a guess. 20 something? Yep. 25. 25, 25. And it does it stay there no matter how often you take it? Because I feel What's like it has increased. It's, it's probably increased because of the roles I've been in. Correct. The challenges I've put myself in. And then also, like, some people thought I was a high D. I'm like, nah, I hate confrontation. I hate having to take charge. I hate having to, like, you know, take the lead on stuff. Yeah. <clears throat> but now it's like, I just have to do it now. Yeah. And let me just say this, the disc is indicative of where you are in life. So mm-hmm. it is realistic for your D to have increased because now you're putting yourself in positions to exercise that skill. That doesn't mean you have to. You yeah, have yeah, to be right, there. right. Let me ask you this, though. So do you feel like I'm on this, like, this little high right now because I'm like thoroughly enjoying these challenges I've been going on? Like when I'm like, oh, you got to do this. I'm like, yes, you get to do this now. Mm-hmm. Like, I've really thoroughly been enjoying like the challenges I've been putting myself into. Jovan, can you do X, Y, Z? Yeah, I can do it. Let's take it on. <laughs> Let's do it. Yeah. Do you feel like... Um, it's temporary? Yeah. No, I feel like you're evolving. Mm-hmm. My I word for the year is becoming. Let's get it. And it's been kicking you my ass. You read the book too, right? What, what book? Michelle Obama's book, Becoming? No. 
Okay, I need you to order that on Amazon. Yeah, I'll put it on my wish list. And he's like, because I need you to buy it. <laughs> um, now he's got a stack of books I got to get through. I think you're evolving. I think you're <coughs> becoming. And by <coughs> you taking the challenge on, <coughs> you're going to see how that has impacted you mm. differently and how it feels good and what the rewards are and what the impact is. Yeah. And you're going to continue on that upper scale. I don't think it's temporary or it's a high at all. I have feel like if it's a little high you want and you're going to crash because I'm a functional depression. Like, my depression be kicking my ass some days. Mm-hmm. We ain't supposed to be cussing, but I just like cussing. I'm care. functioning depression, like, too. I, be, I think I'm, I'm on, I think right now, I, I don't think I know I'm on the, the dip of it. Mm-hmm. I'm not in the high right now. And um, that's what me and my therapist are going to talk about this Friday. It's like, yo, I'm in this dip. <laughs> you should bring it back up. Right. Because as functional depression, people who suffer from functional depression, you can operate at a high level. Mm-hmm. But there's still in the internal like it's like it's like you're here and I'm, it's pulling you down, pulling right? You down. So the inner critic though and the limiting beliefs will tell you that this is not sustainable and at some point right. you're going to crash. Mm-hmm. So I want you, we're going to reframe those thoughts because you might not be at the optimal as what you are at sometimes, but it's not going to be to where you're just unmotivated, not feeling that at all because you see what happens when you tap in. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And you get to control what that looks like. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just not a professional here. I, I still need help. That's what I tell people. It's a journey. Like, Most definitely. It's definitely a journey. It's like it's, you're never going to always have it all together. Mm-mm. And I don't want people to, like, you know, when they listen to this podcast, they think, oh, man, Giovanni, he's got so good. You know, he got to get together. I don't. I ask questions for a reason. Yeah. Because there's still things I need help with. There's mm-hmm. still things I'm still working through and working on. And it's just... The person in the seat that you're sitting in, the, the person that you are today, you just help me. You probably don't. I don't know if you know it. I think you know it, though, because I, I see it. I feel it. I know it. <laughs> We're helping each other. <laughs> Absolutely. But I also tell you that coaches, therapists, people in um, serving roles get to double dip. I, yeah, for sure. Absolutely. We get to double dip, right? We're both leaving here with our cup refilled. Mm-hmm. And this is just a podcast session. So imagine when he's coaching his clients, when I'm coaching my clients, et cetera, we get to double dip. Every breakthrough is not just a breakthrough for the other person. It is a dual breakthrough. Mm -hmm. That's a whole nother topic I should talk about. You should. Yeah. I think you should. We should go live on that topic. Let go. I'm serious. Let go. And I also want to thank you for not letting because when you first met me i already knew you was like who is this girl because y'all i popped up at eat complex i'm like hey let me cover social media for y'all like, yo she was the boss i was I'm like, like i'm trying to barter let me use a podcast right. room like, and let me tell what? you something let me tell you something with me with me what you see is what you get i'm going to tell you what what my goal is i remember one time i told dave i was like dave we need to add some mental health discussions on morning meetup he was like i said what you think he didn't answer me. I'm like, no, we need to do this. So this is the thing, though. This personality, this motivation, determination mm-hmm. has behooved and afforded me everything. Now, does it need to be tamed sometimes? Yes, because everybody I mean, don't. I've been watching you. Yo, she's just, like, she in her bag. I'd mean, be, <laughs> be so proud of you, you know, because I'm like, yo, I've, to kind of just seeing your journey, kind of just like watching them, like, you're like, Lashana's here, Lashana's there. And it's like you command your space. Mm-hmm. And I love that about you. Thank you. I really do. It's like, you know, it's not like like you're it, you intentionally doing it, of course. But it's not like you're doing it in a way that's like super cocky or super like, you know, no. I'm the S-H-I-T. How can I be cocky? I'm very down to earth. Yeah, it's yeah. not. You are super down to earth. And it's just like, but it's just you're like, you make yourself because you know that you know your stuff. And you're the authority in that space. Yeah. And you know that you know your stuff. And I love that about mm-hmm. you. And I love how you do it. Like I said, back in the day when I was like, yo, who is this shit? Like, <laughs> No. And then I watch him like, okay, I get it. I had to build the trust. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so when I'm learning, Javon, because I was born in Germany, a military brat. Mm -hmm. I had to (laughs) form quick relationships everywhere we would move around. Mm. That doesn't mean everybody does. Some people have to date you. Some people have to do their due diligence. Even if you have no ill intent, they have their wall up because of their own stuff. Yeah. So I can't expect for them to be like, oh, yes, let's be best friends, even though I'm ready to be a best friend. Mm Mm-hmm. So that's what I'm learning is, well, actually, I'm not learning that because I don't shrink. Yeah. If you can't take me as I am, you either going to love me or you're going to hate me and you're going to unfollow and you're going to unsubscribe. That's cool because mm-hmm. I believe in attracting and repelling. So, yeah, I'm glad that you uh, gave me some room to grow. And here we are on the podcast and we're going to go live. I can't wait. I'm <laughs> excited. What's the topic? 
You know, our brain is bad, girl. What we just talk, what we just said? Um, we talked about a lot, so we'll just I don't talk. know. Okay. We'll just talk. And it'll be surrounded by mental health, and we just had these conversations. Because um, I want to start doing these lives with people and start becoming more active on Instagram Live because I just have a love-hate relationship with social media. Is that one of the stretch challenges that you're going to do? It's not a stretch challenge. It's just, I, just like, hate, nah. I just hate social media. Yeah. <laughs> I really do. <laughs> and, um, but I just know that the day and age we in, I have to be there. So right. it is a stretch challenge, yes. Thank yeah. you. It is. It is. Woo. That's an avoidance. That's an avoidance. I'm, in my head, I'm like, Negro, put it out there. <laughs> yes, it is. I Look, just, I'm trying to wake up at 6 a.m. So there's some things that you don't want to do that I do really well. There's mm -hmm. some things that you are doing that I hate, that I don't want to do. And I'm not waking, well, so anyways, I'm not even, let's not, that's my avoidance. Make sense? So your Achilles heel is something that someone is doing excellent in. Uh -huh. Figure out a, to how to have a happy meeting. We might need to be accountability partners for both. I'm a horrible accountability partner. Oh, well, never mind. Yeah, I, I, to be honest, no. Like I'm talking about when you wake up, hey, Lashana. It might start off good. <laughs> and then, like, I, my homeboy, he's like, yeah, call me on Saturday. Wake me up for, uh. At least you're honest. We go effect on I was like, um, okay. I'm not calling you. I'm not calling you, but okay. <laughs> I'm and barely like, getting there myself. Like, oh, I, exactly. On like, Saturdays, on the weekend, like, yeah. I just, like, on my weekends, I really, like, like, my boundaries are, like, super me high too. on weekends. Like, Thursday, mid Thursday into Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Saturday, Sunday, my phone sometimes goes on, do not disturb mm -hmm. all day. Um, definitely Saturdays and Sundays, like you might catch me on D and D, and I'm just either in the house relaxing, recouping from the week because I had a stressful week, yeah. Or I'm doing Sunday fun days, or I'm out hiking somewhere out in the mornings, um, exercising. But it's I'm learning the importance of boundaries. Most definitely. And how imperative it is to my mental health. Mm -hmm. I like to have piss poor boundaries. Mm -hmm. And that's due to your mental health and trauma. Get some time to talk about boundaries. Yeah. Okay. What's up? So, do you what, in this mental health space, I think a lot of mental health <clears throat> professionals have a hard time setting boundaries because we want to help everybody, we want to fix everybody, right. especially the new, the person, the amateur inside of in, the mental health space. Mm -hmm. I'm not talking about the influencers. I'm talking about the person who's gone and got their degree. Yeah. They're excited. They're pumped. They got the hours in. They did their first therapy session, and they're like, they're trying to fix everybody. Right. Where do they set the line or where do we as mental health professionals set the line when it comes to our personal boundaries as far as picking up the phone call for this person, even though you know they're about to drain you? Yeah. Like where, where does, how do we establish, how do people establish healthy boundaries? Because that's where I'm at now, establishing healthy boundaries and letting people know like, if I don't pick up the phone, it's nothing against you. It's mm -hmm. just I'm in my, in my zone, in my little space right now. Yeah. So honestly, in order to establish healthy boundaries, you have to have experience what healthy boundaries are not mm -hmm. so you can get a baseline on where you want to be right for example let me talk from the coach's hat I had clients who wanted to text my cell phone and just chat or ask a coaching question on my cell phone outside of sessions oh, I got me a second phone right in addition to that I have a Facebook group for my AOD clients put your question in there tag me I have 24 to 48 hours I wouldn't have known what kind of boundaries to set had I not experience what the blurred ones cause and how it made me feel, mm -hmm. right? So as a newbie, you're going to always want to go above and beyond. Right. But you need to know that you're worth it. You are still valuable by doing what you're supposed to do, not what you think you should be doing, mm -hmm. right? So if you worked with the client and they're not in crisis and they're doing fine, but they want to check in, they want to chat, that's not appropriate, is it sustainable for when you're out of the picture that they can function on their own? That's the goal. Mm -hmm. So yep. when it goes into <clears throat> enabling, Ooh. right? Because that's enabling. When yes. you blur your boundaries, you're enabling the other. So no one's winning. Mm -hmm. There's no difference in a kid wanting five cookies and you give them five when they only should have one. Then they end up getting cavities and you got a $500 dental bill because of all the sugar. Mm -hmm. Or they start gaining weight and now they're being bullied at school. Whatever the... The domino effect you is. You need to be heavy in this mental health space. because You are great. Thank you. you talk so, <laughs> you're so silly. I'm so silly. I guess you ain't no fam. I knew, but it's just like, we never really had a full conversation. We, yeah. We've always talked, like, yo, we need to talk about this stuff. Yeah. But it's just, we never had really like a full long conversation about this. Yeah. No, no, no. And thank you. So, blurred boundaries are deeper than you just letting people get over on you or not take you into consideration 
it's your lack of self-worth. Mm -hmm. Because when you know you're worthy, when you have confidence, ain't nobody crossing the boundary, period. Not your mate, your significant other, your wife, your husband, your child, or your supervisor. They're just not, right? So they're crucial. I went through a thing of blurred boundaries with clients. That caused me to be even more overwor overworked. Mm -hmm. Now I set them, and even when people cross them, I redirect them so they can acknowledge them. No scarcity of, well, are they going to still be my client? Are they going to? That ain't got nothing to do with me, what their responses or how they think. Okay? So just like I'm assertive, you got to get assertive with your boundaries too. Just as assertive as you are with the bill collectors. <laughs> PSA, you need to be assertive with your boundaries too. On God. All right, I'll stop. <laughs> I'm just saying, we hella assertive with the bill collectors. Be like, Hello? No, Keisha ain't here. When well, you know you Keisha. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, man, like that's a whole nother thing. Um, right now I'm setting boundaries with my 19 year old. Um, she hasn't paid any bills yet. And so I'm, <laughs> so now she has to pay one bill. Where does, yeah, I like that. Let's go to the function of it though. Yeah. Go ahead. Me growing up in a household where I had to work when I was 14, mm. had to, you know, give my mom money. I said, this will never happen to my kid have my own kid, not holding her accountable, creating time. a monster now because mm. I've blurred the boundaries. It could still be healthy right? and still not you harboring your trauma. No, I don't want my kid to have to work. At, I want her to be a kid. She is a kid. She's doing very, very well. So that's just an example. If you 5X the Y, you will get closer to the root cause of what's really going on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you. No problem. This is a refreshing conversation. You lit. A corny. <laughs> you said you're corny. Yeah, I'll be doing a little. Mm -hmm, you mm -hmm. do, but it's, it's fun though. <laughs> I know, I know. But you think it, it just takes people back to like that that space when high fiving was cool. Mm -hmm. And I think when people kind of date themselves back to stuff where it yes. was cool and like you do the quirky and corny stuff, it's yep. like that moment was cool. Like I needed that. That was refreshing. That kind of take me away from all the seriousness of the business that we're in today. That is what has saved my life. Mm. I have fun. I'm. I call it corny, and maybe that's me shrinking. Because honestly, that's no. Just you. Right. Right. Well, think about it though. Some people are scared to do that. Right. I love being me. Right. Scared to do the fist pump, do the high five, or like I just looked in. The, some people are scared to do that. So when I do that, it's a little bit of nervousness, but it's also me having fun. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Um. So in short, I would just say. Do what makes you happy. Be a kid again. Yes. And live your life to the fullest because you never know what tomorrow brings. And when if someone is say, if you go tomorrow, have you lived your full, 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 full life? I'm going to say yes. It has nothing to do with this. has nothing to do with the house I live in. Nothing to do with having a ring or not. It's literally me waking up every morning, being my full self and doing it, giving myself grace and getting 1% better every single day. I was about to actually close this out after my commercial, but <laughs> <laughs> I feel like you did. I know you still yeah. got something else. So hold tight to whatever you got next. Do a quick commercial real quick, and then we're going to uh, close That was up. it. That was it. <laughs> All right, so this episode is sponsored by The Emboldened Institute. It's the only space that I know that's sending out deadly messages of hope, encouragement, and a, I want to say accountability now because it's stuck in my head. <laughs> hold on. Do it again. <laughs> hey. Um, accountability and affirmation. <laughs> Um, it's a dope space, man. We send out text messages every day to you between the hours of 9 a.m. and 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time that is sending you the message of hope. I understand what it's like to go through trauma alone and not having a person to send you affirmation to affirm yourself every day. I know what it's like to not get an encouraging word every day. So I create this space free of charge. I don't charge you anything. This is all on my dime to help you become a better person. So text me 404-476-6780. That's 404-476-6780. Text me the word HEAL if you want to be on the Healers Club where we send the message of hope. Text me the word affirmation if you want to get the daily affirmations. Or text both, both words back to back and you will get on both lists. LaShawn, I know you on the list, right? Yes. Word I love it. I love getting you. <laughs> are those automated? Oh, for sure. Okay, you need to tell me how to do that with community because you be coming out. These joints like, are scheduled. We, oh, I love we it. We schedule joints now. So what I do is I have um, a note. My um, my VA sends them out for me. We have a shared note on my phone. I have a thought. Type it in there. He grabs it. He drops them in there for the week. So they're all on time because I don't want people to miss a beat because people mm. 
they become codependent on them in a sense. I hate it, but it's just, it helps people though. Uh huh. So it's just, because it helps, but it also keeps me accountable. Mm -hmm. Because if I don't do what I need to do, I'm doing a disservice to somebody else. Right. So right. I have a thought, put in our note. I love it. You probably got like 50 just. Oh, they just. What, you got 100? What? Already ready. I think we might be going low because of school has been kicking my behind this week. Mm -hmm. So if I, if it gets low, he knows where to go to get stuff. Real got quick. it. Got but, it. But um, yeah, if you ain't got a VA, get you a VA. He got any availability? <laughs> he already stretched thin with me. The co <laughs> he does I'm a like, lot what? of stuff with me. He's like, and he a male. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what's up. So, um, Lashana, yes. thank you for You're welcome. sharing. Thank you for this mini therapy session. <laughs> thank you for being vulnerable. Thank you for allowing me into your world, into your space. Um, I know it's a little uncomfortable for some people, but thank you for just showing up boldly, excited, and just as you. Thank you. Like your energy is the same everywhere you go. I've never seen you <laughs> in a space where it's just you're just not you. Right. <clears throat> like me, I just operate as me. Mm -hmm. You operate as you. Correct. And I've been in the spaces where, as you know, in this entrepreneurship space, where I shrunk myself yeah. to try to either fit in or find out where I fit in. And yeah. as I've evolved and as I'm becoming, right. you know, it's like I learned just just be me. Mm -hmm. And the people, they'll adjust to who you are. Amen. So I'm going to put a discount code because you get a shirt that says that be you, they'll adjust. In here. <laughs> <laughs> Your energies are contagious. <laughs> <laughs> now I really want to cut up right now. <laughs> no, but um, thank you. Thank you so much. Um, it was a dope conversation that we got to talk about mental health. Yeah. Um, because I love these conversations with people, especially other professionals who get it, who understand, and who have a passion and a love for it in the way they do. Mm -hmm. And then also someone who's just so versatile. Like you're so versatile in this space because you can do coaching, you can do therapy, you can do both together like yeah you know, and then you've also niched down mm -hmm. to have a specific thing that you do yep. and that's dope so close us out with something special something dope put a bow on this whole conversation sure let us know where we can find you how can they get this accountability on demand how can they get this business therapist all this stuff yeah and um yeah awesome so guys uh, again, my name is Lashana West, your business therapist, and I help entrepreneurs move the mental blocks that are stopping them from scaling. So if you're struggling with imposter syndrome, not being your full self, overthinking, you have an offer that's just bubbling in your belly, but you haven't brought it out, I'm your girl. You can text MINDSET, M-I-N-D-S-E-T, to 678-336-7756 and book a complimentary clarity call. And if you don't take anything away from this conversation, I want you to take that you are not alone in your journey of healing everything that you have experienced happened for you and you can literally take your story get comfortable with sharing it and that's going to help you to, to break free from the chains that you have created for yourself that was deep <laughs> you ain't reading me that was deep boy <laughs> that was good i was like i was like living in it just watching you on the camera i'm like dang she good Yo, yo, that's another episode, y'all. I appreciate y'all tapping in. I appreciate, listen, get with Lashana. If you need to boss up, especially ladies, are you, you, are you gender specific? I serve specific? men and women. Okay. It, it started off with just women, mm -hmm. but a lot of men wanted to start working with me, and I don't discriminate. I serve both. I think you should serve both. Oh, for sure. Because sometimes, I as me as a man, guys. yeah, I like working with women. Yeah. As far as like on both sides, mm -hmm. as far as like getting coached or therapy, all that stuff, yeah. I'd rather prefer a woman. Mm -hmm. And then working with clients, it's just, I don't know, just something. Just, uh, Especially black women. I'm not going to whole tangent. But listen, if y'all need some help, get with Lashana. She can definitely help you in the space that you need. Um, if you also want to get with me, identifyandheal.com. Get with me. We're talking about how to get through the traumas, the woes, the ups, the downs, the highs, and all that good stuff. Get with me. Get with somebody. If it's not me, if it's not Lashana, get with somebody. Especially your entrepreneurs. Get with somebody. It's not cool. It's not fair because you're doing a disservice to yourself and your clients mm -hmm. by not getting the help that you need. Mental health is a serious thing. It's a very important thing. And I know we're on this wave and it's a, it, we're at an all time high with it. But get serious about your mental health. Get serious about the person that you want to become. Get serious about the person that you were. Understand who you were and then understand who you want to become. And then just do the work. That's another episode, y'all. We out. Peace. He's out.